I think people have to find out what the government was doing during that period. If we're, if we're worried about foreign influence, for the very same reason, we should be worried about whether government officials abuse their power and put their thumb on the scale. And, and so I'm not saying that happened, uh, but I'm saying that we have to look at that. Think about what the attorney general was telling our Bill Hammer there, that uh, we've been so focused on the Russians interfering in the election. What if the real intent early on uh, was our own government trying to influence that election? That's the implication of what he is innovating there. So let's talk to former Whitewater Independent Counsel Robert Ray. Predictably, Robert, it's always good to see you. Um, nice to be with you this morning. It's, it's aligning along party lines, right, where the Democrats are saying Republicans can't let go of this uh, you know, scandal uh, charge and, and, de and Democrats and Republicans divided as to whether looking at the source of the investigation is a legitimate one. Where do you, where do you stand? Didn't the attorney general look measured to you? He's not suggesting one way or another what the outcome would be. He's going to take a look at it. That's what you have investigations to do. I don't think it will take long. Uh, I think it's an appropriate thing to ask. And, you know, where we got off the track here is there's no question that the investigation commenced with concerns about Russia meddling in our election. The difficulty, though, and the one that he's looking into, which I think does deserve focus, is once that investigation commenced, where did it start to shift and to the point where the investigation turned toward investigating the Trump campaign? And that's a, that's a serious issue to be looking at in a democracy where it does have the potential of impacting the outcome of an election. Just as much as, you know, one would be concerned about whether there were things pending against uh, then-candidate uh, Hillary Clinton, in, you know, with regard to uh, its potential impact on uh, her ability to be elected. Those are things that one ought to be concerned about in a democracy, and we should expect that the Department of Justice, when conducting a sensitive investigation, does uh, so through appropriate procedure. It does it carefully. It does it in a nonpartisan way. And there are, you know, legitimate questions asked about why the same group of investigators, for example, shifted from initially working on the Hillary Clinton email investigation and then went over to the other side and started looking and investigating the Trump campaign. You know what's interesting? I was flipping around last night, a lot of the coverage of this on other networks, and um, there, there were even a few Democrats who were saying, well, we know that maybe a lot of this was precipitated by a dossier that was later proved less than credible. But other things came up in the interim. Then, then fine. Then what's wrong with looking at everything else that came up and, and, and whether this was built on a false premise? I mean, if we're looking at intervention of any sort, right. shouldn't that be a bipartisan wish? Well, you would hope so, and that's why I started with, doesn't the attorney general look measured when he is saying, I'm not prejudging the outcome, and I don't know whether or not anybody did anything inappropriate here, but it is well to ask and you would expect the Department of Justice to do so. But you said it wouldn't take long. What, what's your I don't, idea? Of well, what, what, I don't, you know, I don't think we're talking about a 22-month investigation to get to the bottom of the question. Months? No. I, well, maybe, maybe several weeks, maybe a few months. Okay. But, I, you know, I think we ought to have the benefit of that, I think, well in time before the election. Let's then how that would way. that differ, uh, Robert, from the Inspector General report, which could come out any day? Well, understand that the Inspector General's report, of course, is a review internally of Department of Justice employees and really only has the authority to refer for disciplinary action or to refer to uh, the Department of Justice leadership the question of prosecution. So the IG, the Inspector General, Michael Horowitz, is a fact gatherer, but he doesn't have prosecutorial authority. I mean, obviously what Attorney General Barr is talking about, among other things, is determining whether or not anyone should be subject to discipline whether anybody, you know, more significantly should be subject to prosecution for crimes that may have been committed. He can recommend that. Well, the, the inspector general can refer and recommend for prosecution, right. but only the attorney general can decide whether or not to bring a prosecution under those circumstances. But with the lawyer that he picks to, to handle this He separately. would have prosecutorial okay, authority, so all the authority of the attorney general. So yes. he could follow on the recommendations of the inspector general. And decide that the higher threshold of, you know, 
proof beyond a reasonable doubt in the bringing of a federal prosecution under those circumstances would be warranted. Obviously, that's a significant step. And I think the attorney general appropriately was cautious to say, look, we're not talking about that yet. We don't know yet. That's why we're having an investigation. I expect that we'll have the results of that investigation, you know, in plenty of time for the electorate to absorb all that right. prior to the I'm November 2020 election. The political side, whether people are fatigued by this. But I think one thing that should stick in people's crawl, whether they like Donald Trump or not, the FBI being pretty zealous here, really spying on people. And, and I always wonder, well, how would you feel if that were you? I think people have questions and concerns, particularly when the issue, along with the, the obviously significant powers that the FBI carries, whether or not anybody acted in a biased and inappropriate way, as the attorney general suggested, does somebody try to put the thumb on the scale here in connection with an outcome? That's obviously something that you do not want to happen within the Department of Justice. Politics and prosecution should not mix. That also includes investigations, given the substantial powers that we, we have, you know, we give to the FBI. And then I think, finally, to say, there were people who were on notice within the department who had concerns about the Steele dossier. Why weren't those concerns addressed? Were they addressed? Why did information that was apparently relied upon uh, that coming from the Steele dossier placed into the affidavit that was before the That's FISA court? And why didn't the issues about the concerns that apparently people in the or at least some people in the department have about the bias that was inherent in how that Steele dossier came to be, why wasn't that fully disclosed to the FISA court? Those are all legitimate questions. I don't know the answer to those right. questions. No, you're, and I'm not, you're right. And I'm not right. suggesting necessarily that anybody did anything wrong or criminal. But again, that's why we have an investigation to determine that. I think at this point, given all the water under the bridge here, it should not take long, I don't think, for prosecutors and investigators now within the department and the U.S. attorney in the, uh, the District of Connecticut to be able to get to the but bottom of But you do have this. to wonder, to your point, again, no matter how you feel about the president or the Democrats feel about their own party, um, that we want to make sure it never happens again with Russia. Right. Do we want to make just as sure that the FBI doesn't go flying off on a tangent or an attack line that might not be based on anything more? I think, than Neil, that's just as an important point. I do think, uh, separate and apart from whether or not anybody's subject to discipline or whether any crimes are committed, and I think we'll await the result right. of the investigation to determine it. But I think also third and finally, and maybe most importantly, I suspect that what's going to result from this investigation is a tuning up of the, of the procedures in play at the FBI and at higher levels of the Department of Justice so that in the future, if this ever does happen again, it is subject to very close supervision all the way up to and including those politically accountable, which would include the attorney general himself or herself, so that in the future, if we have an investigation of this sort, we, we do follow procedure. S further thought, and I think more appropriate thought, is given to how we go about notifying a campaign in the midst of a or political not, cycle or, or not, not yeah. right? And that those calls are made at the highest levels of the Department of Justice and that those are accountable uh, should be, right? I mean, that's what you want here. This shouldn't be one person's decision or one lead investigator's decision within the FBI. This should br be brought to the attention of the highest levels of the Department of Justice. An appropriate call should be made. I, I imagine in the future it's going to require the personal intervention of the attorney general and a written sign off before something like this happens and also some understanding about you know what how under what circumstances is a is a campaign notified about the fact that there may be potential infiltration by foreign sources with regard to that ongoing campaign in the middle of an election cycle this is the largest and and, and most far reaching investigatory power on the planet the FBI right and if it and, that's starts, not to say, and there's not to say that that's inappropriate. There are occasions. But if you are basing that even partly on a false premise, don't the American people have a right to know that? I think they do. And, and no one is suggesting that investigations don't work off of leads. Some of those leads don't always pan out or turn out to be true. We don't expect investigators to be clairvoyant and to be perfect. Absolutely. But we do expect them to be responsible. And to and, cease and desist when you realize that. Right. And, and we also, more importantly, expect them not to be politically motivated when they're making judgments about people's liberty. That's the most important point. But now the irony is the, the political view of this is that it's politically biased in reverse.
well, that there's been some damage done to the, right. to, uh, on purpose, I suggest, Absolutely. to the attorney general's reputation, precisely because they're afraid of where this might might lead. Look, that comes with the territory. The attorney general is well able to handle that, but the investigation proceeds nonetheless. He strike me as a guy carries anyone's water. He's not going to be cowed by anybody, is my impression of the attorney general. This is, look, the question for the American people to decide is, do you think this is an appropriate investigation? I suggest that you should. And we've explained now, or we've discussed what the reasons why. I mean, the American people ultimately decide, and public sentiment will decide whether this is an appropriate uh, investigatory avenue to pursue. I think it's important. I think, you know, it, it obviously does have the potential just to impact. Just leave politics out of it and just say what, war what, what triggered this, what was it warranted what triggered it. Right. And uh, let the chips fall where they may. And That, that may was be, the argument for the entire Mueller report itself. That may be difficult to do in the current environment, Understood. but it doesn't change that it's the right thing to do, and I think that's what the attorney general is intending to accomplish here. All right. We'll watch very closely. Robert Ray, thank you. Coming in on a Saturday, no less. Getting all spruced up. All right. Nice to be with you. All right. Thank you, my friend. No we better cause. There we go.